Welcome back, everyone. Well, I guess I should start by saying, Owl, are you? <laughs> okay, never mind. It's Friday. Uh, this is an exciting day for us. Anytime Laurie LaFond, who is the director of the IBA, comes on and brings an endangered species, all of us here are in awe of how amazing these creatures are. And joining us today, oh, thanks, Oz. Oz just gave me a, oh, I know, that's right. Hi, how are, how are you? When they look at you, by the way, you know you're being looked at. And we have Oz's mate, really, I guess, right? This is Trish Markey. Hi, Trish. Hi. Very nice to have you. Now, Trish is a director of the Wildlife Institute of Eastern New York. So thank you for taking the time to come in and bring, and bring Oz with you. So, Laura, you're back again. Yes, thank you for inviting me. Oh, you're welcome. It's great to have you here every time. Love the hat, by the way. We're, <laughs> we're styling today, I could tell. <laughs> um, let's, I, I just want to talk about Oz, and then we'll talk about the IBA and what's going on. Uh, Trish, you're the expert here. You said something to me prior to the interview that really stuck in my head. It's that the relationship that you have with Oz, hi Oz, is that you use the word imprint. Yes. Ex explain that to me. When, when you raise an animal, like much like when you raise a cat or a dog, as opposed to them being out in the wild, they, uh, they imprint on you, where they, they think that you're their mother or mate, or, mm -hmm. um, and they, they tend to not identify with their own species when they do that. So Oz I've had since he was a baby. He was about uh, six weeks old when I got him. And uh, so he may not know that he's a snowy owl. He may think, you know, he's, I don't know if he thinks he's human or what, but it's, um, it, it's a common phenomenon when you raise an animal, especially when, one that typically would be wild, although he was mm -hmm. born in captivity, so. He was born in captivity, yeah. right. Now, you're, they're wild animals. So if you think about a cat or a dog or some other animals, right, you can kind of yeah, feel better. Shake it you can you can kind of domesticate them, but you were saying that you always have to recognize and respect the fact that that's a wild animal. Exactly. Right? Yes. Yes. And how? And in which ways? In which just that you there you never know what they're going to do. You never know. You know. You think you can expect a certain behavior from them, but uh, at the end of the day, they're going to do what they want to do and what they're comfortable with. Yes. Right. And they let you know if they're not comfortable with it. And he has over a thousand pounds of crushing power in those feet of his. So you know, um, I, I always have respect for them and remember that at the end of the day, they are wild animals. Yeah, well, I, you know, they are arguably the most beautiful animals on the planet. I mean, every time Oz looks over here, I just can't tell you what it feels like to be in the company of something like this, right? Mm -hmm. Now, here's uh, some information for you uh, I find fascinating. Oz here, probably, if he wasn't in captivity, would live in the Arctic and travel down here some 3,000 miles to winter in this area. Correct. Now, Lori, there's a reason for that, the grasslands, right? Yes. Okay, explain that. So the Washington County grasslands is a 13,000 acre area um, that supports some of the habitat they need and also the prey population, so mice and voles. And they share that habitat with this, our short-eared owls, which are endangered in New York State. And they used to be one of our most common owls. Yes. So uh, we're working, Friends of the IBA is working to conserve critical habitat right here in Washington County for the short-eared owls, the snowy owls, our winter visitors. Mm -hmm. And um, 10 of 11 of the state's uh, grassland birds that are the most at risk. Right, and we happen to live in an area, Lori was telling me, where the grasslands are particularly important to the preserving these species, right? right. Now, uh, you mentioned a different kind of an owl that is in our area over the winter. What kind of an owl is that? And also tell a bit about the background of how that population has grown. The short-eared owls, uh, they are uh, about half the size of Oz, probably. Mm. And they are native to New York State. Uh, they used to nest here historically, but um, because of the intensive agricultural use and loss of habitat, we have them wintering here and uh, we're trying to work to save enough habitat so that they will be nesting here again. But DEC put satellite transmitters on some and they tracked our population to Newfoundland where they're wow. breeding in the, the summer. Can you imagine? Yeah, that's an incredible... And they know the area and they come back to it 
Um, and what you don't know is you think that's water in the cup, it's not, it's Jack Daniels. <laughs> but the, um, Oz just has a particular affection for Jack Daniels. Okay. I mean, he does. Oh, at least it keeps him calm. <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's just stay there. Now, uh, the IBA's mission, as you said, is to preserve the grasslands in, you're over in Washington County in the Argyle area. Fort right? Edward and Argyle. Right. And we're a nonprofit land trust. Uh, our mission is to conserve these areas of critical habitat across New York State for our endangered and threatened grassland birds. Mm -hmm. So we've been working in the Washington County grasslands. Uh, I founded the organization seven years ago mm -hmm. and we've conserved 14 acres um, that we own mm -hmm. and uh, another 50 that we have a conservation agreement on and the state has conserved uh, close to 300 so we are definitely seeing an impact from that conservation. And um, we had rare upland sandpipers nesting in our area this past summer. We're seeing more shorter owls. This year, there's 20 to 30 owls that are wintering on the state area. And, right. and we're seeing um, some of them at our area too. Now, uh, snowy owl, uh, Trish, uh, was also endangered species. You know, they like open lands, you were telling me, right? So when they come down, they could mistake an airport, for instance, right? And they get shot or they, you know, something happens to them. So the accident rate can be pretty high for them, right? Yeah, and also when they're traveling down here looking for food, um, it often Hi. creates a problem for them along the way. And they, when they get here in the wintertime, they tend to be emaciated. So it's yes. great that when they can find a, a big open area where there is source for them, a food source for them. He was thinking about flying around right then. Well, we said and, uh, big open area, yeah. so I think that, uh, Oz, we weren't serious about that. Nip on the jack, okay, yeah. we'll be good. <laughs> so, um, yeah, and by the way, snowy owls are not endangered. They're not endangered. They're not, okay. no. Right. They, I believe, are a species of least concern right now. They're, their yeah, population right. is pretty good. good. But for here, it's pretty rare to be seeing one in the wintertime, but it's always nice to be able to see one. Yeah, oh my God, it's a thrill. Forget being nice, it's a thrill to see one. Well, thank you very much. Now look, uh, every May we do the Winter Raptor Fest, even though it's in May, I'm not gonna ask you to explain that. The, uh, and so we're gonna have you back again, and pl please bring another owl with you, okay? And we'll talk more about that as it comes up. But right now, um, if you want to donate uh, either money or time or land, uh, please contact the IBA. Friends of the IBA. Friends of the IBA, okay. You have to be a friend? Uh, you don't have to be a friend. You can become a new friend. <laughs> Lori, it's great to see you. Thank you very much for coming in. Very nice to meet you, Trish. And Oz, thank you. Now you can go back to eating mice. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, to see this interview again, you can head to our website, looktvonline.com.